Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm going to do a deep dive into anti-roll bars. So let's get into it straight away. What are anti-roll bars? They're basically pieces of metal which link the left hand and right hand side of your car together. And what is the point in doing that? The reason is because it allows the suspension to be connected left to right so that when your car's rolling the suspension is effectively stiffer however the suspension is unaffected in this direction so it kind of decouples the fore aft up down movement of the car from the side to side which just gives us more tuning options but what do roll bars actually affect on your car how do, how do they make the handling feel different well the first thing that they do is change how the load is put into the tires as your car is cornering so let's just think about the front end for a second if we stiffen the front anti-roll bar that causes more load to transfer at the front the car stays flatter but that kind of means that more force is put onto the outside and more is lifted off the inside and this difference in force causes that end to lose grip an end of the car has the most grip when the tires are loaded the same amount they've got the same downward force on them so when you stiffen the car and that load transfer happens it causes that end to lose grip and actually causes the opposite end to gain grip since the car now won't be rolling as much so yeah if you stiffen the anti-roll bar on one end of the car you're going to create more load transfer at that end less load transfer at the other and the end with a stiffer roll bar is going to be the end that loses the grip Another thing that anti-roll bars can affect is the contact patch of the tyres. And that the way that this works is, obviously anti-roll bars tune how much the car can lean from left to right. And as the car leans from left to right, the contact patch of the tyre changes. So if we run softer anti-roll bars, the car can roll more, meaning that the rear tyre ends up more on edges, the front tyre ends up more on the edge. And that also has a big effect on how much traction a car generates and just the ways that the car can corner. A big way that this actually happens is, if you think about the cars, because we've got quite a lot of caster on the front, you'll notice that as you turn the steering, the front tyres actually gain camber. And what that means is that when the car rolls into the corner, oftentimes the front tyre actually becomes vertical or is still actually cambered in slightly where the rear tyre goes into quite a, quite a large lean away from the corner. And what that can do is aid rotation, make the car rotate more, because you're sort of not affecting the grip too much at the front, whereas the rear is definitely losing traction. So depending how stiff or soft your roll bars are, allows that movement to happen more or less, and can affect rotation quite a lot in low speed corners. What else can roll bars affect? They can also affect sort of how quickly the load is transferred in your car. And the reason that that's important is it affects how sort of nervous and initially sort of flicky your car feels around the center. If you're running thicker roll bars, the car isn't going to roll as far, which means that it sort of gets to its destination quicker when you first turn. The load is immediately transferred into the tires that are on the outside and the car is going to turn immediately. If your car's got a long way to roll, you've got soft roll bars on, it's going to take a bit of time for that controller input to manifest itself into your car. So yeah, thicker roll bars are going to sort of make the car more responsive as well. So when you add all of these effects together, what feeling does it have on the track? And let's start with carpet. So let's think. What happens if we stiffen the roll bars all around on our car? Well, the car obviously is going to turn more initially because as I said, it's not got as far to roll. The weight transfer is immediate and the car is more reactive. So the whole thing kind of feels a little bit more flicky, if that's a good way to describe it. And that's going to be the first thing that you notice. Another thing is that, say, coming into the end of the straight, a long sweeping corner, your car is probably going to be more stable it sort of sits flatter. You feel like you can carry more corner speed. And I think this is partly due to this contact patch thing that I've spoken about where the tires are staying flatter, the pins are more in line with the ground, 
and you just don't lose as much traction. You feel like you can just simply carve that corner quicker. Now, some of the disadvantages of thicker roll bars are going to be in slower speed corners, say like a hairpin. It can often feel like if the car is too stiff, you kind of just sit in hairpin and your car can't really rotate through there nicely. It doesn't feel like the car's working. And that's because there's not enough force in the car to get the car to roll enough at that point to actually sort of work in the corner. And I think this does come back to the contact patch theory slightly as well. What happens if your car doesn't roll enough is the rear tyre is still dead flat to the track, producing ultimate traction. The front tyres are kind of lent over and your car just wants to go in a straight line. It's not lent enough for the rear tyres to roll over and allow the car to rotate, which is a very important way of getting steering on carpet. This is especially prevalent in two-wheel drive as well. Um, and another thing that you'll notice, again, I kind of ignore four-wheel drive for this one, but with two-wheel drive especially, if the anti-roll bars are too stiff, you can notice that you're going to lose on-power steering as well. Your car is too stiff. Again, because your rear tyres won't be lent over as much coming out of a corner, you actually won't get as much on-power steering. And I think that the reason for this is that if you imagine a car which is lent over in a corner and you look at the rear tyres, the outside tyre, you're sort of driving on the outside and the inside tyre, you're driving on the inside. And if you add that together, that means that the drive isn't sort of parallel with the rear of the car. It's actually slightly offset the sort of average force at the rear. And I think that allows the car to carry on turning out of the corner, which is another very important thing to generate on carpet. So yeah, in summary, stiffer roll bar, the car's gonna sort of feel more flicky and direct into corners, carry better speed, sort of in sweeping corners. However, it might feel a little bit stuck at low speed, like it won't rotate around the corners. And in two wheel drive, you might lose on power steering. It might feel like it just wants to drive straight on throttle. Now, what if we think about adjusting the two ends individually? If we think about softening front anti-roll bar only, quite often what happens there is you lose a little bit of that initial bite, initial steering, because it's taking longer for that roll to occur at the front. But in the mid corner and exit, you feel like you get more front end, which is obviously useful at times. Stiffer is obviously the opposite. The car's gonna feel a little bit more darty and direct around the center, but then after that has passed, you're probably gonna understeer quite a little bit more. Moving on to the rear anti-roll bar, Usually you'll find that a softer rear anti-roll bar is going to be a little bit calmer going into the corners. You're going to have a little bit more understeer and the rear end is going to stay a little bit more planted, especially at high speed. Coming out of the corners though, usually you can actually get a little bit more rotation since again, the car's rolled over more. That allows for sort of a bit more on-power steering to come into it as the car's so lent over. Thicker rear roll bar is kind of the opposite. The rear end... It's kind of a little bit more jumpy into the corners, feels a little bit more floaty. And when you get on the power, it feels like the car really wants to sort of drive in a bit of a straighter line than if it had the softer rear anti-roll bar on. Now, this can kind of be a little bit different like at slow speeds, kind of like I was talking about before, like in the hairpin scenario. Softer rear roll bar can actually sometimes feel like it turns a little bit easier in the hairpins in a way. It can feel like a stiff rear anti-roll bar. It kind of almost feels like the car will maybe initially sort of flick a little bit, but then it's almost like once you've slowed down and you're in the corner, it can hold the car a little bit on carpet. So that's something to watch out for. Overall, again, thinking about roll bars on carpet, another thing to sort of be aware of is the traction is so high and you've got so much load transfer going on that often a limiting factor is actually sort of more wheels coming off the ground and weird things happening like that, rather than actually just sort of how the car is handling at the neutral point in a corner. So, say you're going into a corner and you have the back wheel coming off the ground like this. How would you fix that? Well, you can either stiffen up the front anti-roll bar or soften the rear anti-roll bar. I get this question quite a lot, my wheel's coming off the ground, 
at the rear and I've done everything at the rear to stiffen it up to stop that happening. The problem is that that's just going to make it worse because what you're doing, if you imagine that your car's rolling and your rear suspension can't move, it has no option but to lift up that wheel there, lift up that outside tyre. If you soften the anti-roll bar, you allow the suspension to move so that the wheel can stay on the ground. So yeah, rear wheel coming off the ground too much, causing problems, stiffer front anti-roll bar, soft the rear anti-roll bar, front wheel coming off the ground, coming out the corners. The opposite, you're going to want a softer front and a stiffer rear. And that can sometimes be your limit on carpet that you need to look out for. Moving on to AstroTurf, sort of outdoors, slightly less traction and a lot bumpier. Usually you want to run slightly thinner roll bars in these scenarios. So usually indoors on carpet, we'll run maybe 1.1 front, 1.3 rear, something like that on two-wheel drive. And four-wheel drive is up in the 1.8, 1.9, 2 mil region. Again, because the track's so flat, there's no bumps and it's super high traction, you want to run those thick anti-roll bars. With the bumps, however, anti-roll bars suffer because the two sides of your suspension are kind of linked together, which means the wheels are less independent over bumps. And that's obviously not good. So you need to soften the anti-roll bar slightly. The, the other annoying thing with bumps is that they kind of catch your car when you're going through a corner. And with the sort of instant load transfer I talked about, if the roll bars are too stiff, it feels like your car really just catches everything and all that initial sort of grip that you've got isn't helpful and makes your car harder to drive. So we'll go down to either taking them off on two wheel drive or if we have very soft suspension, we'll maybe leave them on, but be really quite thin. Four wheel drive, we're usually down sort of 1.6 region on AstroTurf, both ends of the car. So yeah, I think that's the main thing is you basically, because it's lower grip, also, you want your car to sort of, there's less force going into the car, so you need to soften the anti-roll bars a little bit so that it still rolls in the slow speed corners like I was talking about. But also, it's not an issue if it rolls a bit more because you're happy for that to happen if it makes your car a little bit less reactive on bumps, a little bit easier to drive, and just generally inspires a little bit more confidence in you as you drive it. And now we've got our ultra low grip scenarios to talk about, kind of wet weather racing, people racing on kind of slicks and things indoors, on wood, things like that in the UK. You're going to want to soften the roll bars even further, most likely. And not just soften them. Quite often in low grip scenarios, you'll notice that it feels like you, you really need more front end. You need more steering a lot of the time. Imagine driving in the wet, quite a lot of you will have done it, and you'll know that just it kind of feels like you're just understeering everywhere and like you could go so much faster if you just had a little bit more front end steering. So quite often what we do in the wet is soften the front anti-roll bar a fair bit more than we soften the rear anti-roll bar. And what this does is rebalance the car again so you've got less load transfer at the front, more at the rear and you're creating extra front grip and you're losing rear grip just to get the car to turn more in the corner. So quite often on lower traction You'll kind of go more soft on the front than you do on the rear. Yeah, and that allows you to just pivot quickly in the slow speed corners, sort of drive a little bit more from the rear end um, and go like that. Again, usually on two-wheel drive, you probably won't have anti-roll bars on, but just generally even thinking about suspension stiffness, that's kind of what you would do. Um, and then, uh, to be fair, I do know some people that on two-wheel drive in the wet, even though it's so low grip, they'll run a rear anti-roll bar just to get that big difference in stiffness between front and rear to really make sure that the car turns. Sometimes it's worth actually sacrificing a bit of grip in order to get through the corner quicker and turn faster so that you can be out the other side of it quicker than you would have been otherwise. The other scenario out there is a slick tyre racing kind of in the USA. I don't know a huge amount about it because I've only done it once but again that's sort of grippier, a little bit more edgy, not quite like carpet probably more like the sort of outdoor astro that we race on so you probably don't want to have the major split so you've got too much front end traction but again you're just going to want to keep your car in a sort of working range where it's not rolling way too far and taking ages to respond and collapsing but it's not just super darty and like a frying pan on top of the track either you need it just rolling a nice amount to where it feels like it works in the corners but isn't leaning everywhere and that general rule of thumb 
is sort of what you're going to be aiming for no matter what surface that you're driving on and then you can sort of tune the front and rear stiffness together to depend how much front end versus rear end you want how you want it to feel going around so that's it for this video hopefully i've said something that sort of made you think about your car what it's doing and maybe giving you some ideas about how to correct it and what it could be doing wrong so yeah that's it i'll see you guys in the next one